So this next segment is on molestation. This is a, an also a really intense piece. Molestation doesn't necessarily mean you know the person, and it can be like, you know, someone molests a child or an adult, but it can be anybody, you know, we're not talking incest, we're talking molestation. And molestation can be with friends, it can be with um, acquaintances, it can be with um, like teachers, I and mean, I hear so many stories around people going to a teacher, even piano teachers, and people that you think are safe, and you know, they violate the child, or they violate the person. <clears throat> when we're dealing with molestation more with an adult, someone who's more mature, as opposed to like a child, often why that can take place, because you often think, well, why would that, you know, why would that person allow this adult, they're an adult, so why would they allow that to happen? Well, what's going on is there's already a brokenness in the person. So if they didn't have a molestation when they were young, and it happens later on in life, um, keep in mind too that we're also bringing energy in, we're reenacting experiences to unravel them, but I think what's important to really understand about the, this particular lifetime is the inability to stand up for oneself, the inability to tell someone no, the inability to say, no, I don't want you to do that, stop, okay? So there's a loss of self, there's also deep, deep-seated issues around worthiness, and <clears throat> there's also a, a state of, where there's a bit of a, a brokenness within the person's uh, emotional energy body. So somewhere they've already been broken down, meaning that they grew up with a situation where they were shamed or humiliated or in some way um, oftentimes beaten or, or you know, traumatized, where they lose their ability to stand up for themselves. And it can happen really young, really, really young, and it can happen throughout a person's life. But if it's continual, especially when you have a situation where you're growing up in a family where one or more people are abusive, whether emotionally abusive or physically abusive or mentally abusive, it kind of breaks the person down. I'm going to remind you that it isn't the first time that you've called this in to unravel it, and yet it's important to understand, because oftentimes we'll think of somebody and we hear a story about an adult being molested, it's like, well, how did that happen? Well, that happened because of their inability to stand up for themselves, to protect themselves. So there's a fracture somewhere, there's something's broken somewhere. So we want to start mending that brokenness. Now, if it happens with a child, where a child's being molested, then oftentimes they're calling that in most, you know, from past lives, but also somewhere there's a, a reenactment to relive a situation, to relive that kind of disempowerment, that kind of abuse, to unravel that. And again, there still is, uh, like with children, you know, we look to adults, we've been taught to respect your elders, you know, and we, I mean, we've been taught too not to talk to strangers, things of that nature, but oftentimes molestation comes with people that you know. Like I said, you know, teachers and friends and, you know, different playmates, different situations. And there's still that inability. And then oftentimes, too, sometimes with young children, they don't realize that, that this is something that's inappropriate. This is another thing that happens. And then the child grows up feeling like, wow, I did something wrong, you know, and there must be something wrong with me. Because oftentimes, too, a child can actually enjoy the molestation. This is another piece of uh, molestation is people, children, especially with children, when it's been a pleasurable experience, there's, it convolutes the feelings inside and they feel a sense of shame but also a, a sense of pleasure and they enjoyed it, they liked it, but they also had a sense that there was something wrong, that they weren't supposed to be doing that or that shouldn't be happening, and so it twists everything up inside. Okay, it makes, it makes the body have all this emotional twists and distortions so that 
you know, they're trying to, they're trying to unravel things and yet it's just like the mind can't wrap around it because it's all convoluted. It's all mixed together. The, the, the shame, the trauma, the pleasure, the joy, all of that is just all mixed together. So what we have energetically is like an enmeshment, you know? So if we had just separate things like, okay, here's the trauma, here's the intensity, here's the, the horror of it. Here's the, you know, the, the, um, the pain of it. And yet over here is the pleasure. It's not separate anymore. It's together. It's enmeshed. It's convoluted. And unraveling that is a little bit of a different unraveling than if we're just dealing with a trauma and a shame or a pleasure or joy. So we have to kind of disengage these pieces on an energy level so they're no longer enmeshed in order to unravel that energy. Now, not everyone who's being molested is having pleasure. Sometimes it's like even with children, if they've already got anchored in in this lifetime that they don't have any power, they, they don't have the ability to say no, they can't say no, they don't get to stand up for themselves, they don't have the right to stand up for themselves, then they become victims to molest, that molestation. And still, they can still have pleasure in it. And at the same time, not every child is going to have pleasure, but there, oftentimes there is. This is, the, this is part of how, how uh, problematic it is to unravel molestation. You know, so you, might, you might think, okay, well, yeah, let's just move the perpetrator energy, let's clear out um, <clears throat> you know, the feelings and all that. But when they're kind of together, it, it's a little bit of a different unraveling. So, also, I just thought as a reminder that people understand and really get this piece that this is not your first experience, okay? It's, it's happened before, and this is not your first incarnation. And in your past incarnational experiences, we want to unravel and find where it all began. You know, where was the molestation? And Molestation is different than rape. Rape is an actual violent act, whereas molestation is more of a coerce, co coercing one into doing something. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not like the child isn't like fighting, fighting, resisting. You know, they might not want to, but they're still not in that intense um, battle of, of fighting off somebody. Okay, so molestation is it is a sexual act, but it's more, I would call it like a, like a softer rape, so to speak, you know? So it's like it can happen with, uh, you know, different people that you know. And <clears throat> it can even happen with people you don't know, but it's still different because on some level, you're not saying, you're not resisting, you're not fighting, something's not happening like against your will. But the reason you're still not saying no can be because either you don't know there's a right or wrong in this, or because, like I said earlier, there's a brokenness, there's a split in your ability, there's a fracture somewhere where you've already been disempowered. Okay, you, you can get disempowered through your parents, through your mother, your father, you can get disempowered through your siblings. You know, if you've even th situations where, if you've ever had, where you were, with a sibling and they overpowered you. And I, mean, I used to fight with my brother a lot and he'd get me down on the floor and pin my arms and you know do stuff, not sexually, but he would do things, but there was a disempowerment. Even though I'd fight with everything I had, I couldn't win, okay? And then also being having grandmother and, and different parents and dis, dis, uh, disabling that ability to stand up for oneself. You know, it's like you get over, overpowered by, by bigger people, by adults, and you lose your strength, you lose your power, you lose your ability to stand up for yourself. You lose the ability to say, no, I don't want that. Or yes, I do want that. I mean, how many people struggle with that issue right there? Or they, you know, someone, you know, where you're not really saying yes when you want to say yes, you're not really saying no when you want to say no. You're disempowered. It's a physical sensation that happens in your physical body, yet it's an emotional sensation as well. It's like being locked down, like being frozen, being inhibited, being blocked. You can't stand up for yourself. And most people have areas in their life where that occurs, where they're not able to say yes or no. 
because they want it or they don't want it. They'll, go, they'll do the opposite because there's a disempowerment. So with molestation, it is something that can take someone's innocence, like a, like a young child that's never been exposed to sexual energy, and all of a sudden they're having an experience where someone is doing things to them or having them do things to the perpetrator, and they may not like it, they may not want to be doing it, but they find themselves unable to stop it. Okay, that's molestation. It is not rape. It's different. So <clears throat> in that, like I said, the shame comes in because there's a feeling like something's happening that you don't want to be doing, or you're not liking it, or you are liking it, but you're not supposed to because you've already learned, so you've already been taught that it's, you know, not to be doing any kind of sexual things. I mean, remember our culture teaches you all these things. And so you've already got anchored in us that something's wrong. And even, it's the most natural thing, like almost all children play doctor. Okay, it's like, it happens all the time. It's natural, there's a curiosity. If we handled it differently, if we taught things differently, if we, uh, you know, changed our views on sexuality and male-female, they wouldn't have the integrated shame already inside of them, but it's in them. So, you know, we're trying to unravel, unravel these issues, and yet what happens is, is it's anchored in us that there's something wrong. So even our curiosity is wrong. And there's something wrong with us if we're being curious. And of course, we have to hide it. And then, and then if we don't hide it, we go tell our mom, 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 Joey and me, we were playing, and we were looking at each other's peepees. What? You know, parents get all upset, freak out. Okay, now you can never see Joey again, okay? So there's that like, what? Well, why, why, why? Because, you know, then we learn that, okay, that's not okay. So all this ingrained energies, all these teachings and, uh, from our parents teaching us that there's wrongness, then it, it kind of makes us feel uncomfortable. And that also anchors in, it, it, that helps to anchor in the shame aspect of our own sexuality. It doesn't just go away. It's like, it's like something gets like dropped right into the psyche. If your mother makes you wrong for doing something, I guarantee you, it's like a wedge. So you can feel it. Something goes deep, deep, deep into your physical body, into your emotional body, and you can feel this energetic block inside. And then you're stuck with it until you unravel it. It doesn't just go away because you anchored it in, because you got the word came from your mother or your father who is your God, it is your creator. And if they told you that is wrong, that is bad, then you're gonna drink that in like a poison and it stays in your energy field. It doesn't go away. And <clears throat> the peace around the loss of innocence, that can be really intense. When we're unraveling sexual abuse, which of this would be sexual abuse, the feeling of loss of innocence means that we lost our innocence before we gave permission. That's a big one. People have no idea how big that is. Once gone, you're never going to get that one back. I'm sorry, people. When it's gone, it's gone. And if you didn't give permission, there's a sickness inside, a deep sickness that you have. It's almost, it's that feeling too of like, uh, like almost feeling like you can't, you had no control. It's another feeling of being out of control. You had no control over, you had no say over. And this is one of the most precious pieces of you. Your sexual energy, your sharing of your sexual energy is very personal, very private. It's a soul piece of you. When that is violated against your will or when you couldn't ha have the ability to say yes or no and it's taken, it's never coming back. So you're going to have to grieve the loss of innocence, of your purity, of that feeling where you got to give it where you wanted, you got to give it with who you loved and it was taken by somebody or, you know, where, where it wasn't with love. It wasn't because I really want to share this piece of me. I'm sharing who I am. I'm letting you into my deepest, 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 private, private parts of myself. I'm letting you see me at my deepest core levels. It's over. Gone all. 
Okay, so there's a lot of energy in that. There's a lot of uh, feelings in that. Okay, and again, there's going to be feelings of not being protected. Like your mom didn't protect you, or your dad didn't protect you. You're also going to have feelings of wanting them, and then being angry with them, and blaming them, and feelings of mistrust and, and betrayal. So this is a lot of betrayal stuff, especially, you know, people we know and perhaps like older kids or older people and that, that know better, and yet they're persuading, encouraging, convincing you to have sexual experiences. It may not necessarily be intercourse, but there is something around any kind of, um, you know, touching, feeling, things of that nature, it's going to affect you, okay? Be not only because we've learned that it's, you know, that there's all this shame around sexuality, but it's, it's just, it's ancestral. It's in our DNA. It comes through all of our lineage, our ancestors, and it comes through cultural. It's all this cultural stuff, all this religion things. You know, other, other, other um, cultures that haven't been tainted by all this religion stuff, you know, there's more of an openness, so you're not finding molestation happening. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not rampant. It's more like, you're everything's in the open. Nudity is not a bad thing, not a shameful thing. And you're taught that, um, you know, that orgasms and all these different pieces around sexuality is natural and normal. And it really is, but how many people feel like a little distortion or a little squeeze or, or some kind of charge or zing around you know, really being open around sexuality. You know, how free are you? I mean, this is partly why we have all these people teaching Tantra. They're trying to get people to be liberated around their sexual energy. And, you know, big teachers that have really shown and taught the way for that is like unraveling this deep cultural shame around who we are sexually. And yet, without it, there wouldn't be no people. You know, okay, so it's one of the most natural things. This is as natural as eating. You have to eat to survive, you know, sexual energy, sexual experience. We need it to survive. And yet all this taboos, all this labeling, all this negativity around it. And if we didn't have that, there wouldn't be as much stuff happen in with molestation. It'd be out in the open. So hidden things that we don't talk about, that we make wrong, are always going to be happening even more so. Okay, so unraveling molestation, <clears throat> you are going to have shame, okay? You're going to have lots of different emotional components, emotional energy, and beliefs. Mm. Yeah, so lots of beliefs that get you concluded, and then conclusions drawn around sexuality, sex, okay? And it is inhibiting you, it is blocking you, it blocks the heart center. When I look at the energy field of people that have been molested, I can also see that there's still, like there's like, some of them you have like a little more veil, like thinner veils. Some have literal blockages in the heart center. Uh, what that is, is the inability to just let yourself be visible. So sometimes, even, okay, check this out. So even, you know how people even standing up in front of others and standing in front of crowds, and they get really uncomfortable. Keep in mind that what's happening is at an unconscious level, we are feeling that everybody can see everything about us. So if we have feelings or beliefs or judgments around ourselves, especially around our sexuality, our sexual energy, our sexual experiences, we're gonna be really uncomfortable standing in front of a group. This is one of the components why people feel really uncomfortable. They feel all the shame come up, they get inhibited, they start feeling sweaty or they can't talk, they can't think clearly. It's because when we stand in front of a crowd, in front of a group of people, it's going to feel like we're exposed. Because in some ways we are, but no one's really going to see all of us unless they're able to track energy. But we don't know that. It's all subconscious, so we feel uncomfortable when we're put on the limelight or put on the spot in front of people, called even in class. How about in class? Anybody ever feel uncomfortable when a teacher might call on you when you didn't expect it? R face turns red, you get all inhibited, you can't function, you lock down. <laughs> yeah, well that's because it feels like 
everything is being exposed, especially for a kid. So <clears throat> unraveling all of that, it's not just past lives, it's all the, you know, the convoluted experiences, all the convoluted energies and frequencies that we want to unravel. So again, just a reminder, when we do the unraveling, it's important that you let yourself just feel. If you have memory of a molestation, then I want you to remember it, okay? We're also going to call in the perpetrator of this lifetime, those who have done that, because we want to unravel your feelings towards them, okay? And at first, it may, sometimes people might feel when we first call them in, it might be really uncomfortable. You know what I mean? It might feel like you don't want them there, okay? But just remember, we're just calling in at them on a soul level, and we're unraveling at a soul level, okay? Because we want to just start removing the frequencies. <clears throat> and then, too, we want to check out past, past incarnations, and keep in mind that even molestation you have also been a perpetrator of molestation, okay? So it's like we, we're knowing all facets, all sides of everything. And also the thing about, about molestation is sometimes it's with people that you really love, that you really like, that you really trusted, okay? Like let's say, I mean, I, I, the piano teacher thing keeps coming because I remember someone that was being molested by a piano teacher and they loved the fact that they go in and learn how to play the piano, so it had that kind of like a push-pull feeling. They wanted to learn, they loved that, th that part, they couldn't tell their parents, they were disempowered to tell their parents, and yet they were being molested and it felt bad, it felt yucky. So they had this, you know, like this push-pull, like a, a distortion inside, and yet they really liked the piano player. So there's that love-hate kind of feeling. So if you've had someone that you've been molested by, then you can have that experience. So I'm just going to kind of do a quick check-in. So people that are present with the, with the perpetrator, did you feel a connection to them? Did you feel like a friendship or a caring or a loving or anything along those lines? Did you ever like them? Okay. So you may not have liked them afterwards, but prior to, you did like them. You may, be, may have even loved them, okay? So there, when, you, when that happens, there's a feeling of deep betrayal. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, here's this person that you had all this respect for, or you cared about, or even wanted to be like them. And then they violate you through molestation, and it shatters your, your perceptions of trust, and it shatters that feeling of love, and it, and it hits deep, deep places of betrayal. So when we look at betrayal, that always happens in past incarnations. So we want to unravel those betrayals, of, you know, in the past. Because with betrayal, once you feel a sense of betrayal, it's going to happen repeatedly in your life. It's going to happen again and again and again in your life. And what that does is it sets you up so you can't, you'll find that there's always a little bit of a trepidation with people that even you feel close to or you feel a bond with. You, it's like you begin to miss, you can't let yourself let them in all the way. Okay? So this is like that little bit of that barrier. Some of them are like little veils, but some of the energetics where we don't really let ourselves fully come out and play. Got to hide who we are, got to protect who we are. <coughs> so I just want to remind you around the piece of, the part, the aspect of you, the true essence of who you are. Like, you can find it all the time, it's always there. It's that part of you that nothing really can touch, nothing can damage, nothing can hurt. There is no hurt, no pain in that aspect of you. It's the untouchable aspect of who you are. It is your awareness. You all still have that. And, and, and also you're trying to protect that part of you. And the truth is, is that part of you does not need protection because that part of you cannot be damaged. It's just not possible. 
So what we want is we want that part of you to come out and play rather than you trying to hide it and protect it. So in the, the feelings or the experiences of molestation, we've put up our barriers. We've tried to hide these pieces of ourselves to protect these pieces when in truth there's nothing to protect. Okay, that's the eternal part of us. Everyone has it. Everyone is that. Okay, so <clears throat> molestation is a big unwinding as well. So to get the, the most out of your experience to truly unravel the molestation, I'm going to have you think about and remember, if you, know, if you can, if you don't have memory of molestation but you know it's happened, then think about the thought of someone being molested. Okay? It's usually with somebody you know, somebody you've trusted, somebody you've respected. Just keep that in mind. But let yourself just think about that. And again, always call my presence in. This is how we unravel more, is when I'm with you, I'm literally moving energy out of your physical body. So when you call my presence in, you'll feel me show up, you'll feel me right next to you, and you'll feel the unraveling occurring better. And then two, if there's any people that you want to call in that you know have been molested, know that they're going to get an unraveling and unwinding as well. So you just call them in at a soul level, bring them in to the room. My energetic body, my, my consciousness will be with them as well. So we'll be unraveling that. Now again, the more you can let yourself feel how something makes you feel, the deeper the unraveling. This is how you help me to help you. If you don't participate, you don't show me anything. You need to get this part. If you, if you just kind of sit there and don't let yourself remember or think about or feel into how things make you feel, you give me kind of like a blank wall. When you allow yourself, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it might be painful, even though you don't like it, when you let yourself feel the energy, the emotion of, of, a, of a memory or a thought, you literally give me pictures. You give me something to work with. You give me a roadmap. Okay, so I need your roadmap. Even if you're online, it doesn't matter. Feel into how things make you feel. Even, like I said, if you, even if you don't think you've ever been molested, or maybe you're thinking, I don't need this particular topic because I haven't been molested. I'm going to tell you straight up, in your life stream, somewhere, you have been. And you are still affected by that. So even if it means think about somebody else that's been molested that you've heard about. I'm, I know everybody's heard of somebody who's been molested, okay? You, you can't live and be alive and be in the world and not have met somebody that's been molested. You're affected by it. Okay, so even if it means remembering their molestation and noticing how it feels in your body and allowing those feelings to be there. 